hello everyone i hope all of you are in good health this is the first online lesson for class 12 history students we are going to start the chapter indus valley civilization this is the first chapter of your syllabus so what do we know about the indus valley civilization already the indus valley civilization is a bronze age civilization it is situated in the northwest regions of south asia which is parts of afghanistan parts of pakistan parts of kashmir rajasthan and gujarat it lasted from the total time frame of the indus valley civilization was 3300 bc to 1300 bc so almost 2000 years and in its mature form there are two different stages actually uh, the early harappan stage and the mature harappan stage the mature harappan stage lasted from 2600 bc to 1900 bc okay so let's move on to archaeological cultures in the region prior to the discovery of harappan civilization what they can be termed as the early harappan civilization so these cultures were associated with pottery number 1 number 2 is agriculture and pastoralism and number 3 is craft so we now see that the settlements which were generally small and no large buildings were there that means it was an agricultural society this this we were talking about the early harappan settlement grains found in the harappan settlements include wheat barley lentil sesame and chickpea mainly five types of grains millets were found from the gujarat sites and rice were very rare to find so from the seals and the terracotta sculptures we come to know that the bull was a familiar animal the harappan people were familiar with the bull and archaeologists have understood from this that these bulls or the oxes the mainly the cattle they were used for plowing the field because agriculture in that area needed plowing and now archaeologists have also found evidence to support this theory because they have found that in kalibangan the site in rajasthan kalibangan had a plowed field associated with the early harappan settlements now we come to the geography of the region most harappan sites are located in semi arid region where irrigation was probably required for agriculture <clears throat> but you know the traces of canals have been found in the harappan sites in afghanistan but not in punjab and sindh so it is possible that ancient canals have dried up now and the water drawn from wells were used for irrigation not exactly any river but wells besides water reservoirs were also found in dholavira dholavira is the site in gujarat so those water that that is stored water preserved water those waters were also used for agriculture now we look closely at a planned urban center which is mohenjodaro the settlement is divided into two sections the citadel and the lower town why these names archaeologists have named these two parts of the towns because the citadel was a smaller part of the city which is situated at a higher ground and the lower town as you all can guess from the name it is situated at a lower level of the city and it was a much larger area the citadel owes its height to the fact that the buildings were constructed on mud platforms and it was walled off a wall was built around the citadel so it was separated from the lower town the lower town was also walled several buildings were built on platforms which served as foundations so once the platforms were consolidated and in place all building activity within the city was restricted to a fixed area on the platforms so it seems that the settlements were first planned and then the plan was implemented and the city was built upon the foundations now one other interesting thing 
to support the theory that the cities were first planned and then it was built is that all the bricks used in cities to build the buildings and houses and all all those bricks were of same measurements they were all of the same measurements they were used in harappa they were used in mohenjo-daro they were used all over the indus valley civilization all over the major urban centers and the bricks were very much accurate and of a fixed ratio now we come to the drainage system now roads and streets were laid out along an approximate grid pattern now, you know much like uh, salt lake city in kolkata so grid pattern was followed to use as uh, you know the blueprint of the city it seems that streets with drains were laid out first and then the houses were built along them so cities were built such as the drains were built first and then the houses were built alongside those drains and whenever one road intersected another they did it at right angles like this this is one road this is another road the drains were uh, probably lined on the sides of the roads and on the sides of the drains there were houses lined okay so th if this is one corner the other corner would be right angle also and the same goes for the other two corners so the entire thing creates a square or rectangular block now if domestic waste water had to flow into the street every house needed to have at least one wall alongside the street so every house should had have one wall which looked over to the street or to the drains because the domestic drainage has to flow into the sewers which are facing the roads okay and the drains were usually covered so you can see how meticulously planned this drain uh, drainage system was and how meticulously planned the city was the lower town of mohenjo-daro provides examples of residential buildings how many were centered on a courtyard with rooms on all sides Suppose, uh, I don't know if you have seen, but in old days in Calcutta, many of these houses had the same pattern, a big large center, central room with smaller rooms on all the sides. So that is how the rooms or the houses were planned in Mohenjo-daro also. The courtyard was probably the center of activities such as cooking and weaving, particularly during hot and dry seasons. One thing which is very interesting is that the apparent concern for privacy because there were no windows on the sides of the walls which were facing the road. Okay, with uh, the walls on, of the houses which faced the roads, they had no windows. Besides, the main entrance also did not give a direct view of the interior of the house. So, one thing the Mohenjo-daro people maintained was privacy for their own self. Every house has its own bathroom, paved with bricks, with drains connected through the walls to the outer drainage system. Some houses have also the remains of staircases, which means that there were also two-storied houses. Many houses have wells often inside the room that could be reached from outside and probably can be used by passerbys. Scholars have estimated that the total number of wells in Mohenjo-daro was about 700. Okay, uh, I think we have done enough for one video lesson. I am stopping here. Okay, the next video lesson we will continue this chapter. Okay, bye.